Nice to see you again. I'm sorry to trouble you, but something happened the other day that I, I thought, well, I knew you'd be interested in. The phone rang, and uh, it was one of our lovely patrons. The lady knows me well, and um, I, I, know, I know her name. I don't know that I could pick her out of a crowd, but I know her name. And she said, sorry to trouble you, Sylvia, but um, what's, uh, what's this next play you're doing? In June, I said, it's Pygmalion, love. George Bernard Shaw, Pygmalion. She said, yes, but what's it about? Well, there's a very easy answer, you know, which you would normally, you'd normally say. I must have said it a hundred times. Um, well, you know the musical, My Fair Lady, that is based on Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion. And I thought, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't think Mr Shaw would be very pleased. Because from what I'm told and what I've read, he didn't really want his play to be turned into a musical. So it was only done after his death. So I tried to explain a little bit about the play. And it wasn't easy. It really wasn't. Mr Shaw is a bit complicated, you know. Um, but I told her it was all about speech, and then I thought, that sounds boring. So I thought I'd better explain a bit more. I hope, she's, uh, I hope she looks in. Speech, terribly interesting, terribly interesting. And the variety in speech is, is enormous. You know that, I don't have to tell you that. And how does it all start? All the variations started because People tended to live in one village and stay in that village more or less all their lives. Their children were brought up there, so the village got a bit bigger. Their children were brought up there, so it got bigger and bigger. But they never left the village. All the work they needed was there. And so they talked in a certain way. And how do we pass speech on from mum and dad to baby? So they speak exactly the same. And so certain sounds became peculiar to the people of that village, or that town, or that county, as the places grew. You know, nobody went into those villages, did you realise that? Nobody ever went in, apart from those who lived there, and perhaps one of these peddler type chaps who would call once or twice a year. So there was no reason for the, the language they spoke to change. After quite a long time, obviously, we started to move about a little bit um, and if you went to another village you, you would hardly understand what they were saying. And it still happens today, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Of course it does. You know areas where people speak with a very definite accent. You do. Yes, that's right, Yorkshire. Yeah, Yorkshire. What about Sheffield? Ah, oh, Sheffield's very different, isn't it? Part of Yorkshire, but they have an accent of their own. And what about that area up north-east? The Geordies. Away in here. That's what a lady said to me once when I was up there visiting my brother. He was at the um, Concert Iron and Steelworks. And this lady just opened her door. I think it was, it was holiday time or I wouldn't have been there. I think it was New Year. And she just opened her door and said, Away in, Hinny! Well, she meant, Would you like to come in, my dear? So I did. And lots of, you know, all over the country, you know this, that accents are different. I think one of the most complicated is probably Liverpool. Yeah. Why? Because more people visited Liverpool because it was a big docks area. And so the, the, the boats came in from all over the world and people stayed and lived there. Little bits of their accent came in. So it's a terribly hard one. Another hard one. Okay. Uh, what about Cockney? Yeah, that's pretty hard. And that's just really one, one area of London, isn't it? And how do their sounds differ from what we say up here? Well, really, that's what this play is about. 
George Bernard Shaw writes this story, and this was supposed to be one of his great comedies. Great comedy. It was in a, a period when it was all doom and gloom because the First World War was about to start. And so he wrote two what he thought were very light comedies. And this, this is one of them. Um, he, the main character, is Professor Higgins. What is he a professor of? Phonetics. You don't know what that is? Well, I don't blame you. It's the study of speech, of the way we make sounds. Phonetics, the sound of the sounds that we make using our mouths, our tongue, lips, teeth, that sort of thing. Um, and so they de de decided they, they would have to make symbols that could represent all these different sounds. They're mainly different on the vowels. Might tell you about that later. But they concocted these little signs, which were phonetical signs, so that they could copy down exactly what this what any person was saying and so because Shaw took the the Cockney accent how how would he write it down in his play in his books so that people like me and my folks who are in this play so that they would know what to say well you can't you see you can't because Nobody would know what these phonetical signs meant. So you've just got to learn. And what you've got to recognise what the differences are. For instance, the leading lady is Eliza, who is a Cockney girl, uh, selling flowers to make a living. And she speaks in a very broad Cockney accent. And we meet her in the very first scene when they're sheltering from the rain in front of a, a big church in London. There are some posh, that's a good word, isn't it? Some posh people there who've been to the theatre and they're sheltering, waiting for taxis to come. They're sheltering from the rain. There's a real mixture. And then Professor Higgins happens to come into the same area. And I'll give you an example of, uh, of how we have to, to learn how to speak Cockney. This young girl has this basket of flowers and Freddie, who is quite a toff, Freddie knocks into her and knocks some of her flowers onto the floor in the rain and the mud. And she sees this posh lady standing by with her equally posh daughter and the mother says something and calls him son. So Eliza says to her, Ow! He's you a son, is he? Whoa, if you done your duty by him as a mother should, he'd know better than to spoil a poor girl's flowers. Then run away, we aren't paying. Here, will you pay me for them? Well, how on earth, how on earth could Shaw write that down? It's just something that we have to strive to attain to. And Higgins is a professor of phonetics. And he hears her. And he says to a friend he's just met, who happens to have come from India, also a student of phonetics, Colonel Pickering. And he says to Colonel Pickering, you see this, this girl with her curbstone English. I could turn her into a duchess in a year, six months, if she had a good ear. And that's what the play is all about. These two men who are students of speech, take this young... She hears them say this, so she goes to see them the next day anyway. She wants to talk posh. She wants to be a lady in a flower shop. And so the, the two men have a bet that Higgins can or can't turn this draggle-tail gutter snipe into a duchess in six months. And that is what this play is all about. And as you know from the play, and if you don't know from the play, you will know from My Fair Lady whether he succeeds or not. You can imagine what a lot of fun we have along the way where mistakes are made. It's great. Come and see us. Looking forward to it.
I shall be tremendously hurt if you don't come. Bless you.